welcome to another war game review from the playersate.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And I'm very sorry, we're gonna laugh our way through this review. And it's it's a great game. There's <laughs> nothing funny about it. <laughs> once we get we into just can't it, get it together. Once All we right. get into it, we'll be much more professional about it. <sighs> oh. So we just played Chancellorsville 1863. Brand new game. I, I say a couple new, months ago. Couple months old. Yeah. 2020 game from uh, Worthington, designed by Maurice Suckling. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a like a follow on from Freeman's Farm 1777. That is a that is a totally true that's statement. That's kind of what they say. It's not you. I wouldn't. Well, it's the same series. It's the battle formation. Yeah. Series. Okay, so it is sort so of a sequel to it's it. It's like a way. volume two. Okay. Yep. And and frankly, there's a solitaire World War II game that was designed by Grant and Mike Wiley that uses this same system. Which one's that? It, it's Terrawa 1943. Oh, that one's not out. Yeah, okay, so that it, one's on it's the way. It's going on okay. Kickstarter. And so so I think they have a series of these type of games planned yes. in this specific series. Which is very interesting because you'll have yeah. Amrev. ACW and World War World II. World War II, yep. Yeah. It's, it's a fairly you, robust little core because. You could use this in any. I mean, Napoleonics. Yeah. You could do. Uh, I mean, I think you could do World War One, Kind of kind of a static you could easily position. Do that. Yeah, yeah. Very much so, so. Very cool system that is based on the, the concept of formation, location of troops, and how they interact with each other. Yeah, basically. You basically, the core, well, this game at least, you got 15 cards, and on those cards it names one of the formations, and mm -hmm. then you have like a minor activation of a different formation. You're going to play that, and you activate a formation to move an attack, or to perform some other scenario specific Build actions. a redoubt, uh, or Exchange, do things like that. Uh, yeah, move reinforcements. reinforcements. And but you've got 15 cards, 15 turns. Mo cards usually have two activations. So you're looking at about 30 activations only if you play some, every card. Some have three, yeah. but a few, only a few. Uh, yeah, and almost in this game, none of them have just one. They all have at least yeah. two. Yeah. But uh, so it, it's you could use it basically anything that's got... I, I think it would apply to anything. For, formations of any yeah. shape and size as mm -hmm. well, frankly, which is cool. Uh, so in this one, this is the Battle of Chancellorsville. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've got the American Union, Civil War. Yeah, you got un, uh, the Union uh, on the northern side of the Rappahannock Rappahannock River. They're trying to cross the river and take Chancellorsville and Fredericksburg and a couple of other places, locations that are shown. And uh, and the the Confederate side are basically just trying to defend and to stop that from happening. Yeah. Um, What's what you probably know about this one? What you heard is that there's like this hidden movement stuff. Ooh, hidden movement. And basically, there's a couple of small versions of the map in each of the corners, and you have these big, somewhat unwieldy shields that a you put up. They're a little too tall. I don't know that they needed to be that tall. Well, they got to be tall to hide the units, but then right. they also kind of block out yeah. some of the other stuff because you don't yeah. you don't sit. I don't know. It's yeah. they're okay. They work just fine. But uh, that you'll have three or four of your units out on the board at the start, and then you might have two or three on the hidden movement map. Yep. Doing a, effectively a fairly small amount of maneuvering just to pop up in, you yeah. know, you'll pop up in two out of four positions that you could. Yeah, it's, it, there's only a handful of positions that they can move to, but it does create, in essence, a, a little bit of the unknown. Yeah. Like, for instance, in the game we played here, you were building redoubts or defenses because yes. you were sure I was going to come across here, right? Yeah. So you spent a couple of turns building there. And then you popped up somewhere And else. then I came down here and took Chancellorville, uh, the, the junction. Yes. And it's like, you just didn't know that. You didn't know where I was. You, actually, you knew where I possibly could be. Yeah, there's only there's only so many places yeah. you can be. But it's neat. It adds a, 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 a nice yeah. little element. And then basically once everyone gets revealed by being adjacent to enemies, you, you just pop up on the board. Yeah. And they go, okay, so you just play on the main board. So after about, you know... Probably like four or five four turns. Four or five turns. We, most of us were out on the board. But, but then as you pointed out, potentially if you kill a couple formations, you really should put the... Screen back up. Yeah, you can get unsighted again if you right were, because of the way the board is laid out. But the reality is, 
you know, there's three objectives. You've got to yeah. take two of them. It, it's it, everything starts to touch each other. Yeah. And so it, the, the hidden element loses. I, I feel like it loses its importance about the mid game because well, true. Uh, you, it, you start to be like, okay, this is where I'm defending. This is where I'm defending. Boom. But it still does retain a little bit of that hidden information, hidden element with those reinforcement cards. Yes, which, that's which the other I, part of Fog of War. I thought that was a really cool twist. Yeah. Literally, you, the formations have to be adjacent. So, for instance, Early and Hill can be adjacent or in the same location, and you can play these reinforcement cards yeah, to move like, a certain number of guys. I'm like, minus three on Early, but plus, plus three, three on hill. hill. Yeah. And uh, you don't move them on the track... No, and there's mine because there's minus one cards, there's plus one cards. Yep. So you know I've done something, but, but what you, you did, don't I don't know whether yep. they've accepted reinforcements or if yep. they've donated them, and vice versa. Sometimes you can kind of guess. Oh, the strong one's giving the weak one something. Well, yeah. Uh, what like like do? for instance, in our game, I think you moved from early. Or I'm sorry, from hill to early, because hill wasn't doing very much or. It, vice versa, I can't really yeah. remember, but it, it to me it, it became clear that oh yeah, you moved a couple guys from him to him. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to give survivability to a couple more guys yeah. from very overstrength guys by the end of the game at least. And these cohesion tracks, cohesion really is a kind of a, an amalgamation of a lot of things. Yeah, survive troops, probably ammunition, exhaustion. Yeah. General command and control, morale, morale and as you fight, when you move and you attack, th those reduce your cohesion. And once you get down to the danger area, which is the yellow area, you have to do a cohesion check. A cohesion check. You have to roll a die, and at first it's easy to make, and then the second or third time it's going to be really hard to make. But that that's evident to everybody, except for those hidden reinforcement shuffling of units. And I, I thought that was a really cool thing because it retained that hidden concept just in a different form. And yes. I, I liked that. Yes. Brought a different, uh, what do you call that, depth to the game. Yeah, and the like things like the cohesion, uh, that was in the old game. Yep. Uh, the, the activation cards were the same. You get these momentum cubes, which yep. are a little currency that you gain from playing your cards. You just kind of gain them naturally through card play. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you can get some from dice and buying tactics cards with them. That's retained. The combat system where you're chucking dice, looking for doubles. That's retained. Mm -hmm. um, the new stuff in this one is really it's the the actual tactical situation mm -hmm. is much, frankly, much more interesting. Well, there's a lot more options. Yeah, you you you'll do more movement in this game. The, the other one it's very static and there's like. Two positions that yeah, yeah. Freeman's play. farm. It was really a fight over the the farm in the middle. Yeah, and then and, there was like one other thing that could move. Right. So it it was really a back and forth. This has become more dynamic. Yes. It's really changed the options you have. Frankly, I if you really wanted to invest in it. Now remember, you only have a certain amount of activations, yeah. so you can't think you're going to move Howard from this. You, you know, the east side of the battlefield all the way to the west side and do anything, because that's going to take you two or three activations to get there. And he only has a limited number. He yeah. has four or five in the deck. So it's a matter of, there's just a little more option. There's a little more dynamic ability to do some things that you couldn't do in Freeman's Yeah, Farm. everyone's going to move around a bit. It's very rare that people will end in the same spaces that they start, yep. just shooting each other. But this is at a, you know... That, that made it much more interesting, for, yes. from that standpoint, for me at least, as well. Well, I, I, I also I felt like I was more vested. I think the I liked Freeman's Farm. I think you didn't like it as much as I did. Yeah, I liked the flat. Yeah, I, I liked the concept of it. Yes. And I also liked the tactics cards and the, the economy of the momentum uh, tokens. Yes. Because you, you build that. That concept is there's always swings of momentum in battle... And you use that like a currency. You know, you you win a battle and you're like, oh, I'm going to spend some of that, that goodwill. Yeah, to, to get re-rolls to do even yeah, better. Yeah, to force my troops to do better. Yes. And, and I like that concept. I like the movement and the, the, the formation element. It's just a really neat system that I think this is an introductory style war game. Yep. It's intended to kind of bridge that gap between war games and Euro games. 
And I think Maurice has done an excellent, an excellent job doing that. It's playable. It's fun. Even you and I, who, I mean, earlier today, we played a four and a half hour uh, exactly. Hex Encounter War game, East Front, World War II. This still caught our attention for 45 minutes. Yes. And and that's, to me, that's that's good. I don't want to play two eight-hour war games back-to-back. -back. No, it's, this is nice. You can either play it, switch sides, and play again. It's one of those games you could easily do that. Yeah. Or it's one you can play in addition to some other game in a session. Yeah. Because it, it's, not a, it's not a long game by any stretch no. of the imagination. I think 40 to 45 minutes to play through all 15... It might be close to 60. Well, these guys say victory within one to two hours. See, and I feel like... Hour, hour and 15 if I you think played an hour, everything. Yes. I think if you played every card in the deck, understood the rules, no longer than an hour. We did it in 45 minutes. Yes, because... We know the system. You can, well, you can play all 15 cards if it gets that way, but there's sudden death victory conditions. Yeah. You're probably going to come up against those fairly frequently. I would say plays. you're going to win the game more often than not by eliminating enemy formations up to is it three up to three, three. from both sides to me that's well, the way you're going to win most of the time yeah if you're aggressive if, you, if you're passive yeah. and you sit around because really the onus is on the union yeah they the, have to they have to yeah. go out and take everything they it's have undead. to go out and control if they just don't do anything the the csa is going to win yeah so it's going to be more of an aggressive game i think from the union side you were pretty aggressive too, though. You moved around, you maneuvered, you attacked, and yeah. I, I thought ultimately in the end, you just didn't get your cards early. Your rolls yeah, were I, probably I had a slow stop. <laughs> your rolls. I think were terrible, Man. right? You got to remember that combat system. It's a very interesting system. You're rolling five to six dice. One through six does a whole different type of thing. Ones are going to make the attacker lose. Twos are going to make the attacker lose a guy. Three is a momentum cube. Yep. Four, five, and six is the defenders are going to lose, with a six being two and retreat. But you Pretty have to roll doubles to trigger yep. those effects. So you roll five dice at once, you're hoping to get double, triple, quadruple sixes, so I can do four points of damage to you. Yeah, but yeah, obviously, happen. incredibly rare. Yeah. And if, frankly, having it, Having more than one effect at all is quite rare. Yeah. Ba just based on the, the volume of dice that you're rolling. A lot of time it's, yeah, I get one result and then I get a whole bunch of a four, five, and a six. Yeah. You know, so I lose a guy and then four, five, six, nothing else happens. Yeah. So I, I like that. I like that system because it's it's light. It's fun. Yes, it's enjoyable. Yeah. And there's other ways you can modify that, right? You can take an extra cohesion hit to re-roll. Or you can spend three momentum to re-roll. And, you know, that's fun. You start saying, oh, I'm going to keep a six, but I'm going to re-roll the other four dice, hoping to get a six and maybe two fives. And a nice thing with this one is is you've got the redounts. You can build these defensive yep. structures. When you attack me and my redounts, I can spend those redounts and get rid of them to, I just set one of, you know, you have yep. five dice. I set one of them to whatever face I want it to be. Yeah. A one or a two. A one or a two. <laughs> when you're defending a one or a two, and uh, and so then you're rolling four dice, and you've got a yeah. one as well. So th you know there's there's some neat aspects to it, that, yeah. and it's it doesn't seem like a lot, but those extra layers, the the movement on the board, the ways that you can modify combat, it just mm -hmm. is a it's a bit of a richer game than the other one. I like this uh, quite Agreed. a lot. I feel like this design is is I'm going to use the word slick because yeah. I feel like the concepts are very cool. And they're integrated well, and they create, I think, a very fun experience. Yeah. 45 minutes, I enjoyed the heck out of that yes. game. I felt the same way about Freeman's Farm, although it was more static. The yeah. first one in the system was 1759. Different, diff different system, different but, system. It's, but it's kind of the same concept, but you're right. Different system, but it... That was a little more static. This one, I felt, was way more dynamic. Yes. Way more exciting. I, I would agree with that. Way more... I had a lot more options to do here, and I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll show you the board and how some of this works, and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the board, and most of it's played centrally. This is kind of the main map. And here's, down here you can see this is one of the hidden movement maps, and there's another one up here. Um, you do have shields up at the beginning of the game, so you can't see what everyone else is doing. But the little hidden movement maps are just very, very mini versions of, uh, of the main map. And there's a bunch of card holding boxes. 
Now here's the Union Army right here. It's divided up into these formations which are all named and they have cohesion tracks, each of which have 14 cohesion to start with. If you get reduced to zero, your formation is removed from the board. Uh, if you lose three formations, you lose the game. Uh, that's how the Confederates lost this one. Uh, they're up here. They've only got five formations. The Union's got seven. Um, the other way is f to, to lose or to win, I suppose, is the Union's got to take two of these three red circled objectives. They take two of those three, then they're going to win the game that way as well. Um, you play this game with these activation cards, and it's there's 15 of them for each side, and you have a hand of three of them, and after you've played all 15, the game ends, if it hasn't already. So you're going to choose a card to play, it's going to activate this formation with a major activation, so they can basically take two move actions. Then you're going to activate Mead with a minor activation, Mead can move one space, and you're also going to get one black momentum cube. This one's going to give you three momentum cubes, that's really good. Uh, and then you're going to activate Sickles or Reynolds, and so you are choosing cards to play based on who, who you want to activate and do things with, but you might also be swung by how many momentum cubes you're going to get because you might need those to either buy a card or to get yourself some very vital rerolls. But you get a little hand of three, so you don't have massive analysis paralysis. Your choices are, are there, but they're, they're not overwhelming in any sense of the word. Now, to do a major activation, you can either spend your whole activation building a redoubt, which is a defensive feature, or you can uh, exchange um, reinforcements. So if you've got two units that are adjacent to each other, so let's say we got, uh, let's say we got these two guys adjacent to each other or in the same space, that's fine. You have this deck of cards, and we got plus ones and minus ones, and then we got minus threes and plus threes. And you're either going to choose a plus one minus one pair or a plus three minus three pair. And what you're going to do is, let's say this was a, well, let's say this was a couch activation. What you can either do is either give couch plus three, but take and take minus three from uh, Slocum, or you could remove three from couch and give three to, to Slocum, or you could do ones. There's no, there's no twos. You can do, you can either give or receive, and it can be either one or a three. Um, that gets important when you've got guys who are, who are wounded, you can buff guys, and you can nerf guys, and those are face down. So I might not know the total strength or the total cohesion of a unit once those have started to be played. And so there's a little bit of neat fog of war there, that stuff's fun. The other thing you do is you move or you attack. So if Slouch is going to move, you can either take two moves, one, two, or you can move across the river over here, or you can move into combat. So you can move one space here, one space here. Uh, let's say Howard's going to move. He's going to move into 14, and then he's going to move into here, and he's going to do an attack on early. Or you could move into hill and do an attack, and then once that's fully resolved, you can take a second move while well, you're just going to stay in the same place, so you just do a second attack. So to do an attack, you just attack where you are, and that's the thing that's very different from Freeman's Farm. Freeman's Farm, you would stay where you are and you'd shoot people across the connections. You wouldn't move into them. This one, you move into them and you attack, just because the scale's different. So Howard's going to do an attack. Howard's going to roll five dice, but all the Union guys roll five dice. So he's going to roll five dice, and you're looking for doubles of things. So we're going to roll those, and we rolled two fours, and we rolled two, three, and five. So then we're going to consult our little table over here. Two fours means defender loses one cohesion. So AP Hill is going to lose one cohesion. So he's going to move his little box from a ten to a nine up here. That puts him closer to being rounded, basically. And then we've got a three. So a three means attack gains one momentum. So we gain a momentum cube. That's good. And then a two and a five are wasted. If we move in the same... So when you're rolling five dice, this is a lot of what's going to happen. You usually get one pair of doubles and then the rest of it's garbage. 
A lot of that happens. What you can do if you really hate the results, let's say you rolled, uh, basically, you rolled like nothing. This is, two ones means the attacker loses one cohesion. We don't want to do that, and then we roll nothing. That's not good. If you've got three momentum, you just cash them in, and you can re-roll any or all your dice. Or what you can do is Howard can say, all right, that was really bad. Let's charge one more time. You can sacrifice one cohesion, which you were going to do anyway, to re-roll everything and hope for a better result. And this was a better result. So what we ended up with is a pair of fives and then no other pairs. So what we're going to do in that instance is we're going to do one damage to hill. What's interesting is when you start taking cohesion hits to re-roll and do hits, it's almost like an exchange result on a lot of combat results tables. Well, I took one hit to ensure, to, to try and do another hit to you. But seeing it play out and making those decisions is actually really interesting. And that's also why it's very important to cash in as many of your momentum cubes as you can. Because if you can spend those to re-roll, then you don't have to take cohesion hits, which means you're doing more straight damage to the opponent instead of exchanging damage. But that's basically uh, a lot of what you're doing. If you're attacking across these red connections, then you attack with four dice instead of five. If you're attacking across these double green ones, which is a lot of flanking maneuvers or surprise maneuvers, you add two dice. So those are very, very... Uh, you're incentivized to do those. Those are very powerful attacks. Uh, the only other thing, we got these redoubts. So let's say Early's got a got a little defense here, and Sickles is trying to cross the river. While well, Sickles is only going to roll four dice, and Early says, well, before you roll, I'm going to spend my redoubt, and I'm going to place this face up as a one. So you're only going to roll three, and you're going to have a one result as well. So you roll those, and look at that. Now Sickles is guaranteed to take one wound, uh, and then gain a momentum cube and basically nothing. If Sickles chooses to re-roll, we still keep this face up. He's only re-rolling these ones. And you can roll yourself into better results that way, but the redoubts, you can have up to three on a space. And that's a heavy time and activation investment to have done that. But once you, once you have those in place, you can defend, defend, defend pretty decently and pretty successfully which is what the, the Confederate side is trying to do. So that's basically the core of this. Uh, with the hidden movement, you can see this is just basically a mini version of it. And with the hidden movement, you'll start with uh, three or four of your guys off the board. And what you're going to do is whenever you're adjacent to an enemy unit on the board, you then pop up on the board. It's really simple. You just get seen. So you can move a little bit. But as soon as, for example, if Hill's in 12, and, uh, and I move into 11, boom. I just place myself out on the board. And going back off the board is fairly difficult. You have to become unsighted, move away again, and it's, it's not really ideal. But there's enough... Honestly, the hidden movement stuff mostly happens around here. And that's because the, the main game starts with battle lines of a lot of units concentrated here and then like one guy or two guys over here. So the hidden movement is kind of futzing around here, around Chancellorsville Junction, uh, crossing the river over here in the forest. This is where the secret stuff happens, and it's a little bit skirmishy. I, it was fun, uh, but this is much more static. There's less of, the, of that stuff going. There's some. I know we had Howard popped up here as a surprise and started flanking, which wasn't very fun. But... Uh, it's a neat game. It's, it's a very gorgeous game. What we'll do is we'll uh, wrap up with some final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, it was... I don't know. I liked this game. Yeah, I enjoyed I it. Uh, I specifically enjoyed... I don't know. I don't know. I just liked... It's hard not to compare this to Freeman's Farm. I guess that's what... Oh, yeah. I don't, And I don't know that that's a bad thing. No. I like this significantly more than that. Yeah, it's this, a definite jump up. This feels like it's it's that core system. That was literally just the system. It's all it is. It's very bare bones. Yeah. This they it fleshed it out and rounded it out. Yep. In a, in a much more interesting tactical situation, as far as I'm concerned. And maybe that's the history of this, but I really feel like it's the hidden movement 
mixed with the reinforcements. I, 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 I like the map. There's options yeah, to move the, you're around true. You're right. and do stuff. You're not just locked into where you are. How many different positions are there? I think there are 23. 23. I think it's 23. I, I think in Freeman's Farm, there were probably more like 12. Yeah. And, 12 positions. And you occupy about 10 of them yeah, already. There's, yeah. there's very little there's room for There's only a couple that you're going to move to. Flanking. These, I felt like there was a little more maneuver. I felt like there was opportunities to say... Oh, I'm I'm gonna try to move back because you know what he's kicking my butt and I I don't want to get my butt kicked anymore. Yeah. So I'm gonna move back, maybe even becoming hidden again, and then trying to kind of squirrel away and and get away. That just makes for a better game. Anytime you have some maneuver, yeah, it makes for a better it's, game. It's more tactically interesting. And yes. Rich. And this was that. I enjoyed it quite I, a lot. I also we didn't talk a whole lot about it. I really enjoy the the tactics cards. Although I did like the tactics cards, I thought, in Freeman's Farm better than I liked these. These seemed more muted and toned down. Maybe I need another play to get a better feel for that. Because I know we didn't see every single one of them. Well, it was it's interesting. Because I think in Freeman's Farm, the tactics cards is where a lot of the flavor is. Uh, yeah. That's, that's where you take a static game and you do some special things. This one, the gameplay is interesting enough. So you don't need that. And you, as well, much. we hardly used them. Well, I used them, but I felt like I. How many you use in the whole game? It, the, three or four, but I felt like I bought a, what, a lot more than yeah. that. I bought five or six. I think I used one. I think I used one. Yeah. Because I felt like my momentum cubes were worth more for re rolls yes. than they were for investing in some like tricksy little bits. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know because the, the your strategy and tactics on the board is enough to play around with that I don't need to do some of the sideshow stuff. Potentially, I don't yeah. know. I saw some of the tactic cards. It's like you're able to do something that you couldn't necessarily normally do. I always thought that was interesting, but yeah, yeah great game. I like this production value. This is really top notch. Yep. They've Worthington has kind of stepped the, its game up. They've got now a pre molded plastic tray with a lid with a lid so you can throw all your bits in there keep them organized put the lid on put the rule book and the board on top and it's not going anywhere yep. really nice mounted map board great art I, I like this art i like the colors this one even i feel think feels better than freeman's farm freeman's farm map was a little more I, well they got a cedric quebec was the same way as well where it's very muted grays colors yeah this is nice and green and greens and blues yeah on. It, I really liked it. It's got a full solo bot in it with it does. full solo rules if that's what you're interested in. So now I will make this comment. Now we haven't played this solo bot. No. I played the solo bot in Freeman's Farm. It is hard. Because the dice system doesn't rely on doubles for the bot. As in it's hard to play against it? It's hard like to it's play against punishing. it, yes. Okay. So it you still like the same thing. You still have to roll doubles. The bot typically doesn't have to roll doubles. No. So if they roll a couple hits against you, but it's set up that way to make it more challenging. Right. Because you got to remember, they're not doing tactics cards. They're not very smart. They're not doing the things that you and I would do. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's a challenge. I, okay. I got beat several times on Freeman's Farm doing it solo. I want to play this one solo and, and try it out. Yeah, I'd be interested to see how the hidden movement works yeah. in that. If... If it even all. works, I'm not sure it yeah, works. Yeah, they, well. they may they may just do something else. Right. The only thing that I would say about this game that I wasn't the biggest fan of mm -hmm. uh, was the rule book. Yeah. It was uh, mm -hmm. it, it was fine, but it some of it was vague and it wasn't organized in a way that I particularly found very intuitive. It kind of goes through some core concepts and then it gets into like. S explaining the rules in a sequence of play mm -hmm. but some of it's not in there like i, I don't know it, the way things are laid out trying to find rules again was hard wasn't it's like it wasn't easy to find yeah. things You're like, I, okay it's I, a short I, rule book it's not the end yeah, of the world but it wasn't my favorite i i will say the rule books for worthington typically are like that i remember we had the same experience with uh what's the follow-up to lincoln um struggle for europe yeah. I felt like we had that same struggle. We played Napoleon Returns 18, 15, 3, 4, 5 weeks ago. I felt like the rule book there was a little lacking. Sometimes I think the rule book, it's got good information. It's just not organized well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It needs to be laid out. Because better. it's not. No, yeah, I don't know. It, it was like 
You read the rules, the rules are not complicated. No, they're, they're not. They're simple. But for the one or two questions that you do have, it's it takes an extra second to try and find where those were and to glean or the, the specific question that I may or may not have. Yeah. That's all. One of them, I think, uh, when you used your redoubt to freeze one of my die and make it a one or whatever you wanted to make it, yeah. one of the questions was, well, what if I re-roll? Can I re-roll that? Yeah. And it just wasn't really clear that, in that there. Rule, that rule is in the book, and the rule is very explicit, Yeah, but it's not under the re-roll it's, section. It's not where you think it would it's be. It's under the redoubt section. Yeah. And the redoubt section isn't under the, like sequence of play section yeah. it's under the readout section which happens to be near the beginning of the book under the <laughs> what you can do during a major activation sure. like there's there's just some like where things are placed yeah you just you just there's just something you deal with yeah it's not that big a deal you won't have that many questions in the book yeah frankly but just know that it's it just that's just what it is yeah it's not the end of the world the rule no. book was like 12 it will it will not hamper my enjoyment of this game. No. This game was still very, very fun to play. Yep. And I would play it again immediately. Yeah, I I enjoyed this game. I like this system. I like the designer. I like the look and feel of this game. I like Worthington Publishing. They they do interesting games. I've I've never played a Worthington well, that's not true. There was one, I won't name it. We did not <laughs> like that game. Um, but, but one out of the how many we've played we, of this. We've probably played fifteen, I, I think. <laughs> You know, but this is a good game. This is a really good game. Yeah, I and I know. Wait, I'm just rambling at this point. I really <laughs> like the 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 tactile feel of these games. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but moving wooden blocks around as my military pieces feels good. The, and they got the nice printed names on yep. them. Moving them around, it looks cool. It feels cool. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I enjoy it's that. It's it's a yeah. fun. It's fun to play around with. And like, because they could have they could have just done cubes like that. But they decided to. Or they do... could have just done counters. Yeah, this really adds. Don't. It adds to the game. It what? adds to the feel. I enjoyed what? that. If if I see this out, I'm like, oh, yeah. I want to play. That. I want to play that. Yeah. It's going to and it's going to entice non-war gamers to play. Right? I agree. Than the counter with some combat yeah. values on it. Well, you know, when we were playing it, I was putting some tweets out, and it got they got a lot of interaction. You know, re really good comments. People retweeted. It's because it looks great. Yeah. You know, it, it looks great. So yep. This is the kind of game that you would play with your dad or yep. with no your doubt. brother. It's it's a game that you can entice non-war gamers to play with quite easily. I agree. Because it's not massively complicated and it yep. looks and feels good. Yep. So, Chancellorsville, 1863. Step up from Freeman's Farm, which I'm very happy about. Very enjoyable game. Yep. And it's got it's got some nice flesh to that really slick little system they got underneath mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoy this kind of thing, if you enjoyed that, check this out. This was yeah. enjoyable to play. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.